Coming up on this week's episode of Coach's Corner, three out of four wins last week for the V's. Another 6-2 win over Vernon in that. Three more V's are involved in the World Junior A Challenge. We'll tell you how and why in your email and Twitter questions of the week. Next, because Coach's Corner starts now. Direct from the best damn sports bar on Martin Street in Penticton, this is Coach's Corner. It's time for your weekly fill of Bees conversation with members of the Bees organization, fans, and local media. And let's get to your hockey talk with the Bees head coach, Fred Harvinson, and your host, Fraser Rogers. Welcome to another episode of Coach's Corner from the Best Damn Sports Bar here in Penticton. Your place to see the man of the hour, Fred Harbinson, as we talk about the V's for the next half hour in the week that was in Penticton V's Hockey. Well, Fred, it's been a good week for your team, good end to the week over the weekend. Last week, this time, we're talking about rebounding from a trail loss, and your team definitely did that, won all three games on the weekend, and it kick-started on Friday, an impressive uh, 6-2 road victory in Penticton. I mean, Vernon, excuse me. Do you know where you're at tonight? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? It was it, it was uh, a great start. We needed to get on to, on uh, off on the right foot on, on Friday after uh, dropping two points in trail. And, and, you know, you couldn't have asked for a, a better effort. And it started the way we needed to. You know, we went into, into Vernon, and they took a penalty right away in the game. And we were able to capitalize on the power play, and it kind of, Put them on their heels a little bit, and and um, you know by the end of the first period we we're up three nothing, making some plays, and um, you know I think uh, you know Vernon maybe after the first game didn't show a lot of respect to us with some of the things or comments that were made, and and now I think they probably realize that uh, you know they're a good team, but so are we. See what what's in my water here, geez. Moving on though, Joey Bennix scored a key goal, the first one off the start, about two and a half minutes in on the power play. I was talking to him this week and he says that goal was huge. He seemed a little frustrated that goals weren't going in for him, but he's been a dynamic player even though the goals haven't been going in. Yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes uh, players go in those little stretches and uh, Joey's a goal scorer and, and unfortunately he only has, th- I think he said three goals mm-hmm. on the season, but I mean, 18 points or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's missed probably four or five breakaways. So, you know, it's not for a lack of opportunity. And, and if he would have scored probably a goal or you know, he had a couple of breakaway opportunities in in, uh, in trail, that game might have changed. And that's probably where his frustration comes in. And so it's, it's funny, uh, you know, Steve Colley, one of the assistants right before the game, uh, he, he said, he says, if there's a way that we want this game to start would be if, if Joey Bennett could score the mm-hmm. first goal. And, and you know, a couple minutes in there, we you know we get the power play, and he puts one away, and we all kind of looked at each other and realized maybe this is going to be a good night. Sign of good karma, maybe to come on that night. Yeah. Last thing I want to touch on the night, uh, Vernon is a hostile environment to play in uh, in recent years, and is known for. And I was interested to see how this team would respond with some of these new players, and the high school players, but it seemed like they thrived and excelled with all that uh, emotion and that electricity in the building. Yeah, well, you know what, I, I've said it a hundred times, and, and I, th- I think that, uh, you know, I brought it up in the last show that I, I think that a lot of the uh, issues that we've had with that team over the last couple of years has been self-inflicted, and mm-hmm. I think that this year we have so many new faces that they're they're oblivious to it, really. I could tell, I, I mean, I could tell going into the first Vernon game that... Uh, for most of our guys, it was just another game, and you know, obviously, they know it's a rival, and they know it's a, one of the better teams in the league. But there, there was definitely no extra a- anxiety that was put into it, and I think uh, the whole town took a big sigh of relief after we won the first game, and and um, now we can just go do our business and play hockey. And you know, we're going in there again on Wednesday, and you know, they're going to be even more ready for us, and. And so, you know, I mean, the whole season isn't predicated on, you know, one or two games, but I think for a lot of, you know, for the psyche of the town and, and for the team, it was good to get off on the right foot winning uh, the first two games against them. 12-4, you've outscored them the first two games, an impressive stat. We move to the weekend. This team maybe 
needed some adversity, I don't know, after things that have been rolling on so well. And I think they got that and handled it well. We start with Cowichan on Saturday. A hard game to play. Cowichan played very tough, but a 2-1 win. I think that was a, a good character win, you could say. Yeah, there, you know what? It was a di- different feel to it, no question about it, because, uh, you know, you're in a in a 1-1 game and you're, you're putting a lot of pucks in net and things aren't happening, not coming as easy as some of the other games of you know we've seen and then we you know clearly have a goal that should have should have counted that uh was a, just a mistake you know by the officials and and it happens and uh it could have been a situation right there where you know if they get the next one now we're on our heels mm-hmm. and um we you know we we sort of regrouped in the uh, in between periods and came back out and unfortunately we found ourselves in the penalty box and um a couple of huge penalty kills, a huge five-on-three kill. Uh, that uh, you know, like you give up a goal there, and now you're down in the third. And instead, uh, we make the kill, and then find a way to make a huge play with Mikey Riley getting the winning goal. Chad Katner played that game, rebounding from a game on Wednesday in Trail. And I thought a big highlight, maybe an exclamation mark, was that save off Matt Grant with about 14 seconds left in the third period. Big kick save to keep the win. Yeah, stretching out there, you know, I, you hit it on the head. I thought we were real, real happy with how we, we dealt with adversity. And then the biggest thing that we liked coming out of that game was how Chad was able to get a win and, and play real solid. And it wasn't an easy game for him because over two periods, only giving up 11 shots, it's not easy for a goaltender to stay mentally focused. Uh, and then he had 11 because of the power plays against in the third uh, with many of his t- toughest saves in the last minute of the game when uh, the game was on the line. Quick turnaround Sunday afternoon, uh, 2 o'clock against Surrey. Both teams playing three games in as many days. Uh, a good challenge. Surrey was coming in first in the Coastal Conference in that game after winning the night before in Salmon Arm. Maybe a possible preview some set of the BCHL final. Getting way ahead of myself. But in that game, your team showed again uh, battles from adversity early going, but finally broke through in that third period in a 6-3 win. Yeah, you know what? And I'd have to say it was probably the... You know, the toughest team that we played this year would be Surrey. I thought uh, the speed of that game was unbelievable considering both teams. It was their third game in, in three days. And, uh, you know, being it was an afternoon game and whatever else. And it just, uh, the, the tempo of that, of that game was, was uh, at a very high level from start to finish. I thought that they lost their composure at the end of the game with about, you know, five minutes yeah. to go. And, uh, allowed us to, to to solidify the win, I guess. And um, but no, I, I thought our work ethic was outstanding, and give them credit. But I, I really was proud of our guys, and especially watching it on film after. I couldn't believe how how hard we played uh, on both, you know, going both ways. Lots of emotion in that third period of several game misconducts, about four highlighting in there. You don't want to promote fighting, but uh, your team defending itself all year, standing up for itself, has been a theme. And from an unlikely source, uh, Cody DePort, uh, he yeah. was given some business and he responded in a big way. Yeah, you know, he's, he's only got three left, uh, three fights left of his five game max, or fight max there, so he's going to have to he's gonna have to watch himself. And uh, But, uh, you know, all, all, all seriousness, I mean, you know, Cody, uh, you know, he plays hard. And he, you know, he obviously gets under the skin of his opposition. And, uh, you know, obviously it's not something we want to see him doing. Um, but at the same time, he was put in a position where he had no choice, and uh, he stood in there pretty well. The enforcer, Cody DePort, yeah. now we can call him. So I want to segue here into the final topic. Uh, some standout performers uh, from the uh, weekend. We just talked to maybe Cody DePort and Chad Katner, but who do you think uh, impressed you over the, the three games? Well, like I said, I think what, what impressed me is, you know, our, maybe not just individuals, but just... The, the biggest thing right now that we're looking at is our, our special teams and, and everybody wants to talk about the power play but I want to look at our special teams as a whole and you know I took you know if you go through the league right now um, if you take you know goals for on the power play and, and shorthanded goals for and, and and do the plus minus against the power play given that we've given up and, and shorthanded goals we've given up we're a plus 17 the next closest team is plus seven there's only um, there's only seven teams that are in the plus, and West Side's at an even. Um, Vernon, for instance, plus three. There's a lot of teams in the in the negative, and we're plus 17. So, uh, when it comes to our special teams, so I think that's something that really impressed me because I thought our power play scored key goals, and our penalty kill 
uh, definitely at, at critical times in different games made huge kills and found ways to uh, to keep the opposition off the board. I can think of two periods. Vernon in game Friday night in the second period, also Couch in the second period, the PK was very good. You bet. Yeah, and you know, the one in Vernon where we make a mistake, uh, you know, we just finish a kill and then we take a too many men on the ice uh, penalty. That one there, it's three to one at the time. Uh, they've just, you know, our penalty killers have been on the ice for a full two minutes and now here we go again. Um, that one could have been a real game changer where if they score, now all the momentum's shifted onto their side, I'm sure the crowd gets into it. Uh, that was a huge stand for us. All right, well, we'll now wrap it up for our first segment. We'll try to figure out where I am. And when we come back in segment two, we'll talk about home sweet home. 6-0 and at home for the Patigan Vs so far this year. Looking to go 7-0 and on the weekend against Merritt. More Coach's Corner after this break. Here's a look at the V's upcoming schedule. Join us next time from the Best Damn Sports Bar on Martin Street in Penticton for another episode of Coach's Corner. And hey, welcome back to Coach's Corner from the Best Damn Sports Bar here in Penticton. I'm Fraser Rogers. We're in our second segment of the show, and let's talk about the home record. Uh, only undefeated team still at home, besides Powell River and the Coastal Conference, six and zero. So the most wins at home this year for your team. Some impressive numbers, including goals for and against. You're a plus twenty eight goals for and goals against at home. What do you think's been the biggest key for your team's uh, home success? Well, I mean, I think obviously we feel real comfortable there. I mean, it's uh, the SOAC has been a good place to us over the years. I mean, I think. Uh, Last I looked, I think we were around about an 820 some winning percentage since we moved into that building. And um, yeah, I haven't lost a ton of regular season games at home over the last few years. But you know, I think um, you know we're able to get the matchups that we want a little easier at, at home. And um, you know, the ice surface is kind of built for built for us. You know, it's a regulation ice sheet, so our our guys can u- utilize their speed and get in the openings and our. I think our decor feel real comfortable in our in our own end, knowing uh, you know the different uh, ways the pucks come off the walls and such, which was a big. I think I think that was one of the bigger issues that we had when we were in trail. I think it's uh, you know the square corners and trail kind of put some trouble on us, but at home, you know, I think it just uh, you know. And the other thing I think I think this year the big change is um, the, the, you know there was a lot of talk this summer about the changing and the configuration of the seating and stuff, yeah. and I think it's been a massive. Uh, difference, a big change in atmosphere, and I think uh, I got to give credit to the fans that are coming to the games. They're helping push our guys through to wins. Yeah, actually, give me my next topic on this. It seems like the atmosphere, lots of energies in the building now at home games. We've seen it, especially that game against Vernon. We like talking about uh, that was an electric atmosphere. Even on Sunday, that afternoon game, there was there were some fireworks going on the stands. Yeah, you know, and I think people are having fun uh, going to the games. I would hope, and and hopefully more people will hear about it and catch on and understand some of the players that we have here i mean you just uh you know it's 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 not going to be a, a secret much longer because you look at some of the guys that have gone on to you know to, that were here only a few short years ago they're now playing the national hockey league and scoring goals and and making plays well we have some guys here that'll be doing the same in a couple of years and and uh, i think people are realizing that and going and enjoying it and they don't they don't feel they have to take off somewhere else to watch uh you know maybe a, a future future star because flip the script, you say it's always crucial to get your wins on the road as well in this league, especially hard to win on the road in some of these environments. Friday night, we talked about the top of the show, but I want to readdress it. How comfortable your team looked in Vernon in a big game against a, a big opponent, uh, a battle for first place. Yeah, you know, I, like I said, I think we have a real workmanlike attitude, and we have a lot of mature kids on our team. I mean, today I I uh, went for lunch with our 20-year-olds and our captains today and just talked about different you know issues or making sure that everything's kind of moving in the right direction and you know what it's funny uh, I I tried to lead our guys into different areas to see what their reaction would be and you know they're very they're a very intelligent uh, group and and you know when I was getting the answers I, I assumed I would get from 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 smart hockey people and and so you know I, I think that um, our leadership group our guys um, right through the top from top to bottom have bought into what we're trying to do and um, 
that being said, right now things are going well, so it's easy to buy in, and it's you know, all the questions are going to be when when we ha have a rough, a rough patch and um, maybe a little more adversity in the in the in the loss column. Um, you know, how will those guys keep things together? And I I believe that they will do an outstanding job. I want to ask you just kind of off the cuff here about adversity. Your team's been rolling so smoothly. Is there any worry from a coaching staff? There isn't enough adversity going on this early on. No, I'm not a nice enough guy <laughs> to uh, to allow that. So I'm I'm still pretty tough on them in practice and demand uh, the details to be sharp. And um, you know, I think that. Uh, like I said, I think that if if I had an immature group, that's the first thing you get worried about. And um, you know, we, we you know, there's still things behind the scenes that people don't always see, or or while we you know we have a we have a group that wants to be uh, as close to perfect as possible. And I don't mean wins and losses. I just mean about the way we want to play. And uh, the minute we stop working, we'll be just an average team. You mark my words. And right now. Um, it's very rare that I have to get on them in practice as far as work ethic. And one last thing I want to say, you talk about the way you want to play. I didn't see your team defer from the game plan in all three games on the weekend. Was that something you noticed as well? You played the way you wanted to play. Yeah, and that's the thing that I've noticed in games where, where the score has gotten, you know, gotten a, a little out of hand, where we've had maybe a three goal or plus lead. Um, in those few games that that's happened, I really haven't seen guys try to do too much. I haven't seen guys try to get selfish. Um, you know, I, I've, I haven't seen guys divert from the game plan, and and that's the sometimes the toughest battle is just trying to make sure the guys understand that hey, this is our identity, this is the way we want to play, and and the minute you start uh, diverting from that, bad habits will creep in. Okay, you talked about waiting for some adversity. Some might come soon with the World Junior A Challenge with roster uh, players leaving. We do know. Connor, uh, actually Mike Riley, excuse me, and Mario Lucia going for Team USA. It was announced just a couple days ago. Team Canada West selection camp was announced with three players, two forwards, St. Dennis and Curtis Loic, and then Troy Stetcher in the blue line. They'll be going off to Langley this weekend. So a challenge, I guess, for the lineup here, and some uh, veteran players will need to step up, I imagine. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what it is. It's a challenge for, for the players that... Uh, Maybe uh, there'll be some different players that'll be getting opportunities on, on special teams that maybe they haven't had already. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's still a strong lineup that we're going to have together here, even though those guys will be gone. And um, we're not going to make any excuses. I mean, um, the fact of the reality is, is that, uh, that those guys are gone. They're key members of our hockey club. Uh, kind of just like, you know, when we lost our captain. You know, it's uh, something that we're going to have to deal with, and um, I'm not a big fan of the set. You know, the the setup of why we're in this situation, but um, you know, that's so we that we've already you know kind of covered that, and so now this is it. It's just like a, an injury or a suspension. It's something that you know it's it's done, and um, and, and 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 we're going to have to deal with it. The positive, the other positive that comes from it is that hope. Yeah, your hope is that when. Players come back from an event like that that they're energized and and pushed to uh, to another level that they've had to play against uh, you know in, a, in even a even a tougher environment and their game will be maybe a little better when they get back. Team Canada's West uh, camp opens up Saturday, October 29th through November 1st. So no St. Dennis or Stetcher and Loic for the game against Merritt. I want to ask you though now we move along here. Some players have stepped up in roles and players have gone down injured. We see Mark McClellan stepped up for Grant Nicholson. So we're talking about players stepping up. I'm sure you will see some character players become uh, big for the year weekend. Yeah, you know, like there, there's players that uh, maybe don't get talked about as much because they're not scoring all the goals like the St. Dennis's, Lucia's, and so forth. But, you know, players like uh, Mark McClellan, as you mentioned, and um, you know Grant Nicholson and guys you know, who's injured will hopefully be back after the weekend. But they've found ways to be on our hockey club, and they, and their their role is is important. People, uh, you know, it, that's just not just words. You cannot win if everybody is exactly the same type of player. And those guys um, do a lot of the heavy lifting, so to speak, for us. The Kyle Boylus and. And uh, you know, and, and Nick Buchanan has been a you know. There's a na number of other guys that you could say the same. So those are the guys that are going to have to elevate their game even to another level. And um, 
you know, and I'm excited to see how the results, uh, you know, the results after the six games. And the last thing about this, you're not new to this. 11 Vs since 2006 have been on this team. You've been this team since the fall of 2007. So about nine players, give or take, under your reign have gone on to this tournament. So I think you're used to having to fill in the holes here and, and get a lineup here to stay competitive. Yeah, no, it's, you know, every year we've had, uh, you know, three guys uh, go. So, uh, you know, so I think I, I question the number there. I, I'm not going to, you know, I, I think it's actually 12. But 12? anyway, okay. um, but I saw Dave Crompton at 11 as well. But uh, that's for another time we can we can. Uh, BCHL website it, had but, 11. Yeah, well, BCHL website had never been wrong before. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of players go, and it's a credit to our program. Um, you know, and to the players that come here, and uh, it, it's it's it shows that we are obviously able to uh, attract high quality players, and they're getting recognized. And yeah, you know, like I said, all my negativity towards how the whole thing set up is nothing towards the player. I mean, I I was uh, I'll be honest, I was the first one to call uh, USA Hockey at in September and said, don't forget about our guys up here. And because uh, I think it's all about promoting our guys and making sure they uh, whatever they you know they uh, earn they did you know they, they deserve so so stop being a horse to death in the World Junior A challenge everybody looks a little thirsty here as well we'll take a break in our final segment coming up we'll get a preview from Saturday's game Merritt Centennials are back in the rink a five o'clock start and also we'll get to some email and Twitter questions from you the fans to talk to Fred Harbertson. You're watching Coach's Corner right here from the Best Damn Sports Bar. Here's a look at the B's upcoming schedule. Join us next time from the Best Damn Sports Bar on Martin Street in Penticton for another episode of Coach's Corner. And welcome back to Coach's Corner from the Best Damn Sports Bar. In our final segment, we'll forgo the media panel this week, but we'll get some questions via email and Twitter for Fred. We'll start with an email question from one of our loyal listeners and watchers, Matt Miller. You touched on it a little bit earlier, but the uh, non-goal on Saturday, followed by the allow goal on Sunday against Surrey, just your thoughts on those situations and how your team handled both aspects. Okay, well... First off, I'll say that it, you know, mistakes happen. So, you know, so the league doesn't jump on me, but they were both mistakes. Um, clearly, we have the opportunity to watch video. I, I was kind of surprised because I thought both plays weren't overly difficult to see, you know, live, you know, what the outcome should have been. And the first one was definitely a goal on our part. The puck uh, went right off the goalie stick, came back out about three feet. Uh, Deport comes to the net, bangs it in, and then the next, you know, he gets pushed and kind of pushes on top of the goaltender. The issue I had had with that uh, situation was that um, I could read, because of the how loud it was in the building, the ref was yelling at his linesman, and I could read his lips that he said, I didn't see it, what do you think? Do you think it was a penalty? And first off, you can't ask your linesman if it's a penalty unless it's a major. So that's what really incensed me is that he was letting things unravel you know be strong about you know what you think you saw and and, and go with it and um and that was a critical critical error uh i think that our team our team handled it well but i thought we kind of got riled up a little bit and my, probably a little bit of my fault because i let that situation you know when i heard what he or saw what he said really got under my skin a little bit um the next day no excuse when you have a four-man system that you miss a high stick. Uh, the, the front ref was right on the goal line. Uh, puck goes in the air. Clearly gets hit by a high stick. Mm -hmm. He said that he swung at it and missed it. He, I mean, the video shows that it goes, starts in front of a guard tag, get, hits the high stick, ends up behind him, goes off our leg. What I, when, he, when he signaled as a goal, what I thought he was doing is saying, oh, it went off your guys' body and in, and that's not the case. When it's a high stick and it goes off the body and in, it's that's... It's still, we didn't have control, so it's, uh, but there again, I thought uh, we bounced back, find a way to get another goal, the next goal, and, and uh, we survived, and 
you got to hope that there's um, not too many mistakes. Uh, the refs are human, I guess, and uh, we make mistakes as coaches, players do, and I guess they do as well. We have one, I just got an email from, it was quoted as Mike, no last name, so whoever Mike is out there, thanks for the question, asking about Merritt on Saturday. He's any, any worry of overlooking this team ahead of the rematch with Vernon come Wednesday next week? No, because it's the only game we have to focus on, and that's what we've been focusing on uh, in practice. We um, have been throwing some different things in there, tendencies that, that Merritt use, and uh, you know, Merritt's having a good year. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I don't uh, know why we would ever even think about taking them lightly, and, and uh, you look at um, how they played in our building the last time they were here. I mean, it was uh, a tough game, and, and we've got you know three key guys out, so it's... Uh, uh, not to mention Logan and so and Nicholson. So I mean, really five five regulars out. So for us to take it lightly, it means that uh, the comments I made about our guys being smart would uh, shift in a hurry. <laughs> okay, and one of our loyal uh, season ticket holders goes to the sh- live tapings all the time. David Feather, more of a lighthearted question for you. Fantastic win in Vernon, he says last weekend. Do you think the large number of V fans on the bus, the booster bus that came down? played a good factor in your team's motivation especially early on and if so why don't you guys get a double decker bus next time to burn it <laughs> well i'll look into the budget on that one uh i definitely have to agree uh that the fan bus helped i mean you could hear them out there i thought it was outstanding i thought uh um you know i, I think our guys fed off it especially when we scored goals you could hear them uh, another thing was that i didn't talk to david before the game which uh, the only t- the only time I've talked to him before a game was in Chilliwack, and we all know how that one turned out. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, no, it, it was great. And, and the more we can do that as an organization to set up, we will try to do. And um, Will Russell did a great job of getting that all organized. Yeah, great effort. And two things stood out for me. Late third period, with about a minute and change left when the game was 6-2, you could hear the Go V's Go chant in Vernon. That was special. And also, not many people could see this on the radio side, but a salute to the fans after the game what you see here yeah so we see a lot yeah you know what i thought it was a real classy move by our guys and and once again back to the intelligence of our team it wasn't something that us as coaches had to tell them to do they just did it all right now let's get to the preview we talked about a little bit of merit to a team that's actually bounced back and is back to 500 hockey since that loss to penticton when they came here in their first visit uh, what do you make of this saturday game uh, at home you've been very good but this is a team that's obviously has a chip on its shoulder too yeah, they'll come in real hungry. Um, you know, they've had uh, some success in their building, and, and uh, you know now they're coming into ours, and, and they know that they played us tight the last time they were here. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think they'll be um, you know much different than what we've seen in the past. They'll be without Wilcox, mm-hmm. which hurts them a little bit on the back end. And um, but you know, up front they've got a, you know four lines that kind of come at you in waves and, and play hard and and just keep the game simple. They don't try to do too much and. Uh, they know that their, their way they're going to do it is by keeping it simple and trying to outwork you. And um, and that's why we've had success this year is that our skill level a lot of times will take over and we don't allow teams to outwork us very often. Speaking of skilled teams, Merritt's coming off a couple of impressive wins. They've beaten Powell River since playing Penticton and they shut out Surrey uh, as well back on Thursday. So it's the team that's at the top of their game. You talk about them not quitting. You guys never seem to quit no matter what the score is. And same with Merritt. It was a 6-1 game, but it didn't feel like that the way they were playing. No, not at all. And and so, uh, you know, the score kind of got away on them and, and, and that's why it ended up that way. But, uh, you know, I I think we've, you know, we've learned no matter what the reason is why we, you know, lost a couple games. Uh, the bottom line is both teams that beat us in regulation are teams that we beat pretty handily um, at one time or another earlier in the season. So, uh, you know, our job as coaches is to make sure the guys are focused. Our veterans, uh, once they show up to the rink on Saturday night, uh, you know, it, it falls on them. And, and uh, you know, I think we'll... Uh, We'll be ready to go at 5 o'clock, and, and hopefully we'll have a good crowd to cheer our guys on. Penticton is looking to continue a long winning streak against Merritt at home at the SOEC come Saturday. Before we uh, end the program tonight, quick injury update. Uh, we talked about Grant Nicholson getting a little bump. He's out right now. Is that the only injury at this point for your team? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and he started skating today, so uh, he's probably, you know, it looks like he's real doubtful for, for uh, Saturday. Uh, probably more probable to be in the lineup uh, on Wednesday in Vernon and and, uh, and then we'll kind of take it from there. All right coach as always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. All right thank you.
That's Fred Harbinson. The show is about him. I'm your host, Fraser Rogers. I'd like to thank Divine Hammer Computers and the Sword Summerland for powering another episode of Coach's Corner. We'll see you next time right here from the Best Damn Sports Bar. Coach's Corner has been a presentation of the Pentington Bees and FR Media.